Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up an equatorial mount. The first thing we need to do is set up the tripod and screw in the bottom plate. To do this we need to unscrew the bottom of the mounting bolt. Remember not to tighten the bottom plate all the way. We will be doing this later. This is how it should look when you're done. Notice how the bottom plate is not in contact with the legs. Now we want to align the tripod so that it faces north. This can be done easily by imagining a line drawn from the back leg to the black post on the top and then using your phone to point that north. Now that the tripod is aligned, we can put the mount on top. Now that the mount is in place, use one hand to stabilize it and use your other hand to lift up and tighten the mounting bolt. Now we can align the bottom plate with the legs and tighten it all the way up. Make sure the legs are fully spread apart while tightening. Now the base is put together and secure. Grab the adjustment knobs and screw them into the base. These adjustment knobs work by applying pressure onto that black post we saw earlier, causing the mount to rotate while the tripod stays in place. As you can see, once I've got this tightened, I can actually rotate the top of the mount independently from the tripod. Now we want to use the bubble level to make sure that we level the tripod. Now we can remove both the front and back caps for the polar alignment scope. The front cap just pops off. The back cap has a screw holding it in place, so that needs to be loosened before the cap can be removed. The declination axis needs to be rotated 90 degrees for the polar scope to be used. Before adjusting your altitude, you must loosen this knob. Now you can use the other handle to increase or decrease your altitude according to your latitude. Once adjusted, tighten the lock knob. You want this dial to match your degrees of latitude for your current position. Now you're going to look through the polar scope and align Polaris with the crosshair using the adjustment knobs explained earlier. Once aligned, you're going to tighten both knobs so the mount can't rotate during use. This is what the crosshair in the polar scope looks like. You will try to align Polaris within it. Now that the mount is aligned with the North Celestial Pole, you can put the polar scope cap back on. Now you want to return the declination axis to the original position. You can use the indicator and line it up to zero on the dial and then you're going to want to tighten the clutch. This base stores the counterweight shaft within the mount itself, so you want to loosen the screw and let that drop out. Make sure to catch the shaft and let it come out gently. Once it's in position, tighten the screw back up. Now we need to remove the safety stopper on the bottom of the shaft and insert the weights. The position you secure the weights on right now doesn't matter, we will adjust that later. Now that the counterweights are on the shaft, we can put the safety stop back on the end.
Now we put the telescope onto the mount. This can be done with one person, but two people makes it easier. You just slide the Vixen mount onto the mounting plate and then tighten the screws. If you're using a camera or any other accessories, put them on the scope before balancing. Now we loosen the clutch on the right ascension axis so that we can balance the scope. This is done by softly pushing on either the scope or the counterweights to see how much it rotates to figure out where the balance point should be shifted. When the scope appears to be balanced, tighten the screws on the counterweight so they stay in place and return the right ascension axis to its original position. To balance the declination axis, the right ascension must be shifted 90 degrees and then you balance the scope laterally within the mounting plate. Now that everything is balanced, we're going to return both axes to the zero position. Again, it helps to use the dial and the indicator to ensure it is aligned properly. Your mount's power cable may have a 12 volt plug. You will need to plug an adapter into the wall first. Line up the notch on the power cable with the mount's power plug and plug it in, then screw it on. Now that the mount is turned on, plug in the hand controller and go through the initial setup. Sometimes this might give you issues and you may need to plug the hand controller in before turning the mount on. The setup process is going to prompt you to put in information about your current time and location. You can use the arrow keys on the, on the pad to select what number you're changing and then you use the numbers on the numpad to change them. Press enter when you're done with each step. The hand controller is going to ask you if you want to do an alignment process. So I usually like to do a two star alignment, but you can choose any of them. To select a different alignment process, use the arrow keys on the bottom of the numpad. Once you've selected which alignment process you're going to use, it will ask you to pick a alignment star and then it will salute to it. Once the scope is done slewing, you'll use the directional arrows on the hand controller to center your target in the eyepiece and then press enter. When the alignment is complete, you can press the escape key three times to go to the main menu and use the up and down arrows on the bottom of the keypad to navigate. Selecting the object list, you can then navigate within that menu between name stars and your different catalogs. To slew to an object, you navigate to the catalog it's in, press enter, type in the catalog number, and then press enter again. Once slewed to the object, you can again use the arrow keys to adjust the framing. When you're done for the night, navigate to the utility functions menu and then navigate to Park Scope. Press enter and wait for the scope to park. 